so since I'm going to be driving over to my parents' house and working with them today, I figured I would start One of Us is Lying. I have both the audiobook and the ebook, so the only thing I want to do before I start this audiobook is actually read the first sentence because I love opening sentences, opening paragraphs. I think they're so interesting. So let's see. And I only have three days left on the audiobook, so I gotta get to it. But one of us is lying. Two can keep a secret, one of us is dead. I didn't realize there was a third one in the series. Very cool. Ooh, and it's done in parts? Interesting. Okay, I don't want to look too much at it, though. For Jack, who always makes me laugh. Okay, so hi, self. <laughs> Part one, Simon says. Chapter one, Bronwyn. Monday, September 24th. A sex tape, a pregnancy scare, two cheating scandals, and that's just this week's update. If you all knew of Bayview High was Simon Kelleher's gossip app, you'd wonder how anyone found time to go to class. Ooh, okay, we're starting off strong. I'm even more excited now, actually. <laughs> I know basically nothing about this other than it's, there's a twist. Um, which, to be fair, with like mystery thrillers, there's always some kind of twist you can expect, but I've heard this one is uh, especially twisty. And Jessica, of course, has already read this before me, and she said that like it gets crazy and she wasn't expecting it. So I know some people don't like to start off knowing how crazy it is because then you're kind of watching and waiting to see, like you're trying to guess more, but um, I think the audiobook's gonna help with that. So let's go ahead and get started and connect this baby. Oh wow, it's only like an 11 hour book. If I can get it to connect, no! I got a 35 minute drive ahead of me. Let's do this. She's a princess and you're a jock, he says. He thrusts his chin toward Bronwyn and it Nate. And you're a brain and you're a criminal. You're all walking teen movie stereotypes. <laughs> you should know her name. Why? I can't think of a good reason. That girl and I have barely crossed paths before today and probably won't again. I'm pretty sure that's fine with both of us. I know her type. Okay. Finish this book. Oh my god, okay, so it starts off so well. We get a death, like, immediately, which I love. We also get the mystery of the phone, so I feel like we have two mysteries and we're just waiting for them to converge, which is really cool. I also love the audiobook version with the narrators is amazing because we're getting multiple perspectives and multiple point of views, so it really helps to distinguish them, and the guy who does the country accent is really fun. So, anyways, I, oh, it good. Okay, time to get back on the road, but. Play. Us. <laughs> Her eyes wide and glassy. Nate, he's gone, she says. Simon's dead. Bum, bum, bum. I'm getting gas, obviously. But also, I will say that I do love that we went through all four point of views already before we get the final he died. It's just very good story structure. I really like that. Starting off strong. I am into it. And I've really been wanting to read a mystery, a murder mystery anyways. So this is like, this is perfect. <sighs> Do, 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 do. Oh, that was the click. The phone almost slips out of my hand. Another text from Chip. What in the fuck? The killer is now admitting they're a killer on Tumblr? Back when Tumblr was still a thing. Dang. Okay, also, theory. Cooper's texting someone, is it a guy? Am I just wanting it to be a guy? I always come back home from my parents with so much stuff. <laughs> so the rest of my reading was done completely by the audiobook. This was one of the first books that I've read where I haven't really switched back and forth all too much. Strange the Dreamer, I listened to a lot of the audiobook, but I also read a couple chapters on the ebook. Part of that reason was because the boyfriend got a new standing desk, so I got to take some of his old desks or desk parts, I should say, because I, of course I had to go to Ikea and build out some new sort of cupboard space and extra drawers, but I did take the kind of tabletop portion from him. And what better way to spend the hours upon hours of building than to listen to One of Us is Lying? And it was a great read. So I didn't do the best job vlogging this part other than random time lapses of putting together the new office. <laughs>
Good job, baby girl. <laughs> oh yeah, is that your little butt? So I figured now was a perfect time to go over the things that I really enjoyed about the book and the sort of tropes. Is it even a trope? I don't really like normally. Okay, there were spoilers throughout this. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about who done did it, okay? Normally, I don't like the sort of person commits suicide and then sends letters back or like pulls some strings once they're already dead, like they've already set it up. Something about that really sits wrong with me. I did enjoy the absolute asshole that the boyfriend ended up being. <laughs> the ex-boyfriend, I should say because it has been a while, I have now forgotten the names of the characters and will refer to them as that one dude and that person. <laughs> and you definitely got hints along the way with his controlling nature and then the sort of random stuff that seemed to frustrate him. The fact that he knew all along that she cheated and that was just one of the reasons he wanted vindication, it is crazy. So I liked that there was some amount of like group effort to sort of frame these kids, but, but yeah. I, don't know how I feel. <laughs> That's the best version of this I've seen done in a while, but it just, had I known going into it that there was going to be a suicide involved, I don't know that I would have read it, you know? So it's like, I'm really glad to have read it, so I'm glad I didn't know, but yeah, that was the twisty bit, was that <laughs> Simon was pulling this stuff from, from beyond. <laughs> from before he died. My favorite thing about the story though, besides some of those twists leading up to it, it felt, <laughs> it felt very real besides this whole murder investigation being framed, all this stuff. But the reaction of the parents just seeming to do their best and their best not always being good enough. You know, uh, McManus doesn't really make any excuses for it, but there was a reason actually throughout the entire book there's never excuses for behavior of the characters so much as the characters giving their own reasons. I actually loved the very end when that one dude was telling Bronwyn, like, you know, he actually said it's not an excuse, it's just a reason for why I tried to push you away. I really enjoyed that. I liked getting to see how the system failed him, how they targeted him and he was the one thrown in jail, and then how helpless he felt when they're when the rest of them are kind of uncovering this mystery. Despite the fact that this kid created a gossip girl like website and was threatening people and with the help of a couple others pulled off this suicide slash attention grabbing, throwing people under the bus, like all this stuff, you know, that part's crazy, but the rest of it, I thought McManus did a great job of feeling very grounded. Like that one dude's mom who came back and you know, she talks about her addiction issues and the lack of trust that they have, but then you can really see how she not only failed her son, but also how she's attempting to make amends. Anyways, what else did I love? I really loved the multiple point of views. I don't know how much of that was the different narrators that the audiobook had. That was such a treat to have different narrators for each one. Um, and at first I thought maybe different voice actors were just playing multiple, like the two guys were being played by the same person, just changing it a little bit and the two girls the same thing, but no. I loved the girl who really slowly found her voice um, and I loved the bond that she had with her sister. And again, we're not making an excuse for the mom being the way that she is and she's shitty, um, but you see some reasoning, you see some sprinkles and you see the sisters being able to kind of push back against that. So it still left me very hopeful despite it being so grounded in things that I've seen before, you know? That was nice. And I also like how Bronwyn's example, it was wrong of her to cheat, but you could so understand why she did what she did. It feels so reminiscent of how, I don't know, social media and accountability is held today where people should be held accountable for the mistakes that they've made. But then this kind of, you know, Simon's version of putting them on blast and the social repercussions of it after don't always though sometimes um, equal what was done. I will say I remember taking James Patterson's masterclass and he talked about how you have credibility as an author and the kind of facts and information that you sprinkle in. Um, you could be fact checked on that by a reader who's just like knows of the thing or is paying attention to the thing. So I was trying to tell the boyfriend what the story was about <laughs> and like, you know, the big things along the way. And when I was telling him about the 4chan element of this, he was like, that is not how 4chan works. <laughs> And for the purposes of the story, I think it worked for the people who don't know anything, but I could see how if he had been reading the book, he would have been like, 
you're kind of pulled out in that moment. You're kind of disappointed that they didn't quite get something to work. When I think they could have, it's just that 4chan is the most well-known sort of anonymous forum. Anyways, so that was an interesting lesson for me, not even in the reading of it, but then explaining it to the boyfriend and him telling me that. So very cool. I also love how there were so many clues along the way, in part with the ex-boyfriend being an asshat. You know, that was at first, he's this perfect guy. And then of course the controlling nature is shown and the sister not liking him and all this stuff. We're seeing bits and pieces and it just kind of gets worse. And of course it's told from the girl's point of view, so it makes sense why we'd see this worse and worse. So the sprinkling along the way was really cool, especially in Simon in that first chapter, I think, basically saying like, the narrator element. And I even filmed it when I was laughing at the response where he's like, oh, we got a job. We have a beauty queen. We have this, that, you know, very breakfast club making fun of it. And then Simon's like, well, we also have the all powerful narrator or whatever he said. And that told us, it told us in the first chapter what was going to unfold almost, you know, I fell for the red herring and the teacher, but I just looking back, you're like, oh, and it's very fun to also get to see the characters reflect on that as more and more information comes out. So I really loved um, also that the Southern boy's boyfriend, the model, don't know any names anymore, gonna have to Wikipedia them, how he's the one who figured out the sort of mystery element in the diner scene. That was actually really cool to see this character that we'd alluded to, but not really known as a character himself. I about get to basically be the solving piece or the voice that solves it, even though they put together so much. So anyways, I love how McManus was able to kind of juggle this huge cast of characters without the story ever feeling too long or anything like that. All that to say, I would read the next one. What is it? One of us is lying. Two of us can make a deal. Two deadly. Two, two is, two is company. Three is a crowd. What? Oh, one of us is next. My bad. One of us is lying, one of us is next. Two can keep a secret. It is always interesting, I think, when deciding to write a mystery, how many point of views you write it from. And I think this one was obviously a concept that she easily decided on pretty early on, having the four people there <laughs> besides Simon and then getting to see all of it from their perspective. It was good. It was good. Yeah, literally, if I could have changed how, who the person behind the death was, and I don't know that it would have been possible. Like I don't think the story would have worked. Um, that's the only thing because I'm not big on the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you have read this book, please do comment down below. Jessica and I will also be doing our author tube chat in April, pretty soon when I post this video. So if you want to chat with us, not only live about that, but also about foreshadowing, which I think this book does really well. Um, we're going to be talking about foreshadowing and writing and how we attempt to do it, how we've struggled with it, at what point we kind of layer our foreshadowing in. We'll also be talking about Camp NaNoWriMo. So I'm really excited. It'll be a fun chat. And I can't wait to talk to people who also really enjoyed this book. And maybe if there was a possible way to like semi-workshop having a different killer, Again, don't know that that would actually work. But if you want to answer those questions also, please do comment down below. Let me know how or when you foreshadow. If it's early on in the draft, let me know how many kind of mysteries you have unlocked in your own writing. Also, let me know what your favorite sort of book that's similar to this is. I am so big on the like locked in trope. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like the killer is in the house with you sort of thing. This was a different twist on that and they're obviously not in the house the whole time, but it gave me kind of similar vibes with the murder happening the way it did. Let me know what kind of mysteries you like as well, or if mysteries is not a genre you're even interested in. But yeah, they're being very good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. We're kind of glossing over that right now, but that's my guess. The teacher done did something. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, no device connected. What?